Hello everyone and welcome to our webinar. Start your coding journey with Robotify. I'm so glad that you are all able to join us today. I hope this webinar will work your time. I know that you might be busy this time because it's today. Um, it's the UAE National Day Celebration Week. So thank you uh, for joining us today. Now, for this occasion, we want to send our warm wishes and we will say happy United Arab Emirates National Day. To get started with our webinar, we want we are going to introduce ourselves first. My name is Hiba Smadi, a trainer and customer experience specialist from Knowledge Hub. And my name is Shabnam. I'm a trainer and implementation officer, and we are here today representing the Knowledge Hub. Knowledge Hub is Middle East's indisputable leader in the education sector for the past 20 years. We provide educational solutions and technology integration for grades K to 12, as well as universities. We offer state of the art ICT solutions that support 21st century learning. We have successfully established international presence with partners in USA, Europe and Asia Pacific. We're extremely proud to be exclusive partners of Robotify in the region. Uh, we're going to be with you for the next few minutes. Please feel free to interact with us in the chat box at your convenience. There are no rules. So um, first, a glance at what we will be covering today. We will be talking about the Computer Science Education Week and Hour of Code. We will be introducing the Robotify platform. Uh, an introduction to our panelists today. We will be telling you more about Robotify, its features um, and a live platform demo. Uh, a feedback from educators about the platform, a question and answer session. In this webinar, our objective is that teachers and students will learn how to use Robotify for coding. The Computer Science Education Week which is from December 5 to 11 to 2022, is an annual program dedicated to inspiring K-12 students to take interest in computer science. During the CSED week, young people around the world participate in activities that demonstrate the transformative power of computing in our everyday lives. For those of you who are unfamiliar with this, the CSED week is celebrated during the birthday week of Grace Hopper. Grace Hopper was a US Naval officer and a mathematician who was a pioneer in computer science. She developed a program that translates programming code into machine language, also commonly known as the compiler. And why coding is important. Now the base standards for digital literacy are being raised for all jobs. Now 84% of business plan to accelerate digital, digitalization of work processes to adapt to COVID-19 in 2020. By 2030, by, 200, by 2034, like will, there will be 47% of all jobs will be automated and replaced by robots. This means that we must help the next generation to learn how to control these reports and learn how to code them. Now, just a reminder, after this webinar is finished, all attendees will receive a free login credential to use Robotify platform during the CS uh, ED week and the hour of code. And also there will be a certificate of attendance will be issued to all attendees. And also in this webinar, we would love to hear from you. So kindly write in the chat box more about you if you are a teacher or a student and how you are interested today to learn more about Robotify. Now Robotify born in 2019, it is the best browser based robotic simulation simulator to teach students how to code. Now using Robotify actually, students will be have access like 24 seven to the latest robots without having to ever purchase a real hardware. So if your students are interested in physical robot and they find it hard to have with Robotify, they will enjoy learning about coding with robots with narrative learning. So Robotify is also 
is in the browser, so no need to download anything. It can be used in uh, on any device from laptops or tablets or even your smartphone. Just simply log into your Botify account, pick a lesson and get coding. It is as easy as that. Now to tell us more about Robotify, uh, it is my honor today to introduce our speakers right from Robotify, Mr. Dylan Fitzpatrick and the head of international sales in Robotify. And also we have with us Matthew Dalton. He is the Robotify specialist. Hi Dylan and Matthew and welcome. And we want to thank you for joining us today. Thank you Heba for for that warm introduction. Um, I'd like to just start by saying thank you for having us and, and it's our pleasure to be able to, to walk you through some of the features of Robotify. I think, you know, on this session, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just talk you through Robotify a little bit about our story and our, and our journey uh, and just kind of a high level overview of some of the unique features that, that we have to offer on our platform. Uh, and then, you know, as Hiba mentioned, I've got my colleague Matt Dalton on the call, who is our product specialist who knows all things about Robotify. So we will actually take a little bit more of a deep dive uh, and, and go into a live product demonstration. So hopefully uh, for you guys, you'll you'll get to see some some unique features of Robotify uh, live today. Um, so just to kind of get us kick started, I guess I want to highlight that. Uh, at Robotify what our vision is uh, and our mission and and really what that is is to make coding accessible to every student across the globe in a very fun uh, engaging and, and playful way uh, and I will talk about that in a minute and, and why we came to be where we are today. Uh, just to mention though uh, this year has been a very successful year for Robotify uh, and as you can see we actually won uh, the winner in the best coding and computational thinking solution uh, for the Cody Awards, and we were a finalist in the best virtual lab. Uh, the Cody Awards has been running for the last 36 years uh, and is designed to recognize the best technology in the education uh, industry, and some even deem it as the, the Oscars of, of technology. So uh, some very proud mentions that we've got there, and, and of course being the winner of the best coding and computational thinking solution was a huge achievement for us. Yeah, in Robotify. Uh, next slide, please, Eva. Uh, OK, so just to tell you guys a little bit about our story, uh, Eva, I think there's just one more little animation there. If you want to click next. Yeah, there we go. So our two co-founders, Adam and Evan, actually met each other in high school uh, at the age of 15 years old, which was fantastic. Uh, actually sat beside each other in science class and and both were self-taught coders um, so th they would have taught themselves how to code using google or, or whatever they could find on on the internet or online and so this was an issue that you know they they start talking and we're, we're speaking of you know the opportunity to learn how to code that they had in school and and certainly here in dublin it it just didn't exist and that's where the vision started right can we make coding uh, accessible to every student and so they start going into local schools here in Dublin uh, with, with physical robots uh, and showing them how to program these robots. And when these robots were moving and coming to life in front of them, the level of engagement, you know, really just soared in the classroom. Kids were loving it. They were playing with the robots. They were learning how to code in a really fun, a really engaging way. But I guess that third word in our vision is to be accessible. Uh, and that third, that third word just wasn't really hit, you know, using physical robots meant that schools had to invest quite heavily uh, to get one to one access and it just really wasn't realistic. So at about two, three hundred dollars a pop, was a school going to buy 400 robots uh, for their school? Well, well, the answer is no. Uh, and so that's kind of where the decision to go virtual was born. Uh, and and the guys went back to the drawing board and built, you know, the best in market browser based robotic simulator, which helps kids how to learn how to code. Uh, in a fun and an engaging, but I suppose finally in an accessible way to really create that tangible access to everybody uh, across the world that decides to use Robotify. So nobody's priced out of it, which is which is fantastic at a much more affordable price. So just to kind of give you an idea of, of how far we've come, uh, what started off as, as two guys out of Dublin, Harland in a science class uh, many moons ago, we are now 
We've now been acquired last year in November by Imagine Learning, who are one of the biggest ed tech companies in the United States. So I, I guess that just highlights what we're doing is working and, and our vision really has become a reality. And, and what we're doing every day to help kids how to learn to code is, is being recognized. And, and we are doing that and our global footprint is constantly, constantly growing. Now, this is quite a visual product, so our next slide kind of has a little quick video. So it'd be nice to be able to just show you some of them unique environments that we have. I think I think that video does quite a good job of uh, briefly showing, um, you know, just some of the unique environments that we have, the incredible 3D virtual worlds uh, that exist within our platform. Uh, Hiba, if you want to just click the the next animation, please. Uh, all six at once would be great. Thank you. So just to just to kind of reiterate some of the features that we've got on our platform. Again, Matt will be diving a little bit deeper into all of these uh, and show you them and what they look like. Um, but we do have a best in market coding interface uh, fully in browser, which means as an educator, when you decide to use Robotify, the hassle of downloading or installing a, a platform doesn't exist. Uh, all you need is, is a stable internet connection, which is fantastic. Uh, we do offer both Blockly and Python. So we've now got that block based coding, but, but recently we've, we've added that text based experience, uh, which is just that little bit more valuable as well. So what we've now kind of have is is that very scaffolded approach where you can come onto Robotify, learn these basics of computer science, of programming, like loops, like variables, like functions, in a very kind of safe and scaffolded way. But now we've added the experience of Python. So once you've learned these basic fundamentals, you can take that next step uh, and learn the text-based coding, which is great. Uh, you'll see in the middle here, we've got 3D worlds. So what I just want to touch on that is, you know, one of the reasons that we've got m multitude of fantastic 3D virtual environments is to keep that engagement level high. So students will engage with our platform, they'll, they'll play in some of our worlds and I mean some fantastic worlds so we can take students to the big red planet of Mars in our Axel's Mars Adventure course. Uh, we can go deep sea exploring with our underwater rover. We can deliver packages with our very own uh, servo drone. So some really incredible 3D virtual worlds that helps drive engagement but also create that fascinating learning experience for students. Uh, finally, up the top line here on the right, we've got our virtual robots, and this is something that you'll notice uh, when you use Robotify in the classroom. Students actually make that connection with, with these robots. We've got Axel and his companion dog, uh, Bite, here on, on our slide. But, but because students are being taken on that journey in a very gradual process, you'll actually see them, them making that connection with these virtual robots. And you'll see later on in one of the videos that I'll show, uh, kids actually doing the, the very own dance that, that Axel does when he completes a task in Robotify. So they do make that connection with, with the robots, which is great. Down the bottom left, uh, accessibility. So, you know, we did really strive to make Robotify accessible to, to all students. Um, so we're available 
uh, anywhere, anytime, and on any device, which is such a you know such a key kind of USP for us, and really helps you know make that coding experience and coding journey for students quite unique. Uh, and that when you do leave the classroom, the opportunity to go home and actually you know continue that journey is there, which is fantastic. And we are available with a with you know a multitude of different languages. Uh, just to add to that, we do have you know single sign on available with Google Classroom, Clever, uh, and more to come uh, next year. So you know, I suppose as an educator, onboarding and rostering is is very very seamless and simple uh, to get to get up and running on Robotify. Um, we all know taking on new product in the classroom can be a bit of a headache for teachers, and so we've really gone above and beyond to make that experience you know super easy, super smooth, and and absolutely no no trouble in that. Uh, in the middle here down below, we've got our teaching tools and our suite of educator resources. Again, Matt will dive into this a little bit more, um, but we've created a, a whole bundle of content to help teachers and enable them to deliver Robotify in the classroom uh, in a very seamless way. And, and whether that be you're an educator with years of coding experience or an educator with, with zero coding experience, all the tools and resources are there. Uh, to really guide you along your Robotify journey to, to enable and empower students how to learn uh, coding. Uh, and we do hit all four C's of STEM, so critical thinking, creativity, collaboration, and, and, com and communication skills, which, which as we know are all vital skills uh, these days in the 21st century. So some really unique features. And, and again, as I mentioned, Matt will go into a little bit more detail with these in our live product demo. Uh, hey, if you want to go to the next slide, please. Uh, and just pop up the animations. Fantastic. So at Robotify, we, you know, everything we do operates around our, our three part foundational framework. So that's Robotify Learn, Robotify Create, Robotify Compete. Um, so Robotify Learn is, is all of our courseware. So when you come onto Robotify uh, with zero experience, that's, that's perfectly okay. Um, you can learn all these basic fundamentals, you know, your loops, your variables, your functions, and as I mentioned, in a very scaffolded way. It is self-guided, so, you know, what we do have to offer is a, a little toolbar, which which just nudges students along the way to, that tells them what's required from each task. Each task does become a little bit more challenging than the one before it, so what that means is when students are engaging with Robotify Learn, you know, that kind of gradual, safe learning environment exists, and they're not just being thrown in the deep end. Um, they are kind of learning in a nice scaffolded way, which is great. That leads me into my next one, which is Robotify Create. Uh, and this is our kind of like project system. Um, and, and just to kind of reiterate again, you will see these live, so I wouldn't be uh, worried if you're not following a little bit. Matt will be able to show. But, but what our project system enables us to do as students and as learners, when, when we do feel a little bit more comfortable with Robotify and, and coding after engaging with our learned content, we can kind of get that little bit of creative freedom in our project system uh, and, and kind of use your own code, which is fantastic. And, and what we can do then is share share that code with our peers um, who can, you know, edit the code and, and also kind of work collaboratively together and see, you know, where one student might have, I suppose, more efficient code. You can learn off the, the pupil next to you, which really kind of stimulates that, you know, communication skills, collaboration, working with, working with peers, which is fantastic. Uh, and finally, uh, which is like the cherry on top, is Robotify Compete. Uh, I like to think of this as where eSports meets coding. And, and this really drives engagement in the classroom, and we've gotten some fantastic, fantastic feedback with Robotify Compete. So we've learned how to code, we've created our own code, and now finally, we can compete with our peers in the classroom in a very fun way and in a very safe environment uh, via our leaderboard system. So the way I like to think of this is like a Pac-Man game in the arcade. Um, so we complete a coding challenge and we're, you know, given a score and instantly placed on a live leaderboard. Um, but if your student beside you or your classmate codes in a more efficient way, uh, an algorithm will spit out a higher score and put them further up the leaderboard. So what you'll actually see is kids, you know, fine tuning and, and, and almost improving their code to try you know, better their students, their other students in the classroom's code. And, and that just creates a fascinating learning loop where, where kids are almost learning how to code without even realizing they're learning. It, it almost feels like they're playing a game. Uh, they're getting great enjoyment out of it. And I know I suppose the most important thing is 
uh, you know, they're learning how to code, which is which is fantastic. Um, next slide, please, Eva. Just and say. OK, so of course, uh, I'm a Robotify employee. I'm obviously going to wax lyrical about our product and, and talk, you know, in the highest regard about it. But I think just to give you an idea of the scale uh, and reach that we've gotten and some really fantastic feedback, uh, none other than Steve Wozniak, who was uh, the co-founder of Apple. I think we're all familiar with Apple with our iPhones and iWatches and, and stuff like that, has given us some fantastic feedback about Robotify. And, and what we've actually done uh, is we created a virtualization of his physical robot, which retails at about $16,000 for his educational company, Wazed. Uh, so you can really see the value of what we're delivering. And for Steve Wozniak to sit up and take note of what we're doing in Robotify, uh, and if he is to believe in us, I suppose, what, why shouldn't you? Um, but just, just to finish up really quickly here, guys, I know you guys might have questions as educators and as teachers is, you know, what, what implementing Robotify looks like. And I'm here to assure you that a Robotify implementation is very, very smooth, very seamless, and very easy to get going in the classroom. And what we've got here in our next slide is a nice, you know, little uh, testimonial clip, which just shows that rollout in a classroom that we did. Uh, and hopefully it can give you guys the confidence that this is such an easy product to, to use and to roll out. So, uh, Hiba, if you want to just play the next slide, uh, we can all watch it and, and, and enjoy, I suppose. And say, can I go home and do this at home or do I have to stop here? And I said, rock on with your bad self. Go as far along as you need to and have fun with it. And but more importantly, come back tomorrow and tell me what you did. Programs that are using technology really allow all students access to it. It's really expensive to do those programs and to have a robot for every single kid. It's just not feasible. But by having things that utilize technology, every kid has a chance to develop and work on something. As an educator that works in a Title I school district, I really appreciate the way Robotify brings cyber robotics to all of my students and kind of levels the playing field. You don't have to have a tangible robot in front of you because you're seeing your robot on the screen do exactly what you tell it to do. I'm more of a visual learner, so I like how I can see it. And it's nice that I can have more of a challenge to see where my growth is. I think it's very useful for teaching people that's okay to mess up because it like it wants you to keep on trying and trying again to learn and put little bits of code, fixing it each time and time again. With a program like Robotify, it's actually really easy for the adults and kids to see what exactly it is. You're just programming. You're making something move that's on the screen and you're in charge or in control of what the actions are. You can use Robotify and never have coded before in your entire life. The programming aspect, the interface, the student interaction are all amazing, but what really sets it apart from anything else on the market are the educator resources. An educator that has zero experience with programming, coding, can walk in and use Robotify with their students. It's really, it makes it really simple and easy to learn. What makes Robotify fun is that I can play with my friends sometimes, I can help them. What I love about the robot is at the end where you accomplish the little dance he does. Me and my friends love that so much. They love Axel. He is a hoot. I have kids in my class that will stand up and do the dance every module or task when they have success. You see just random kids popping up, standing up, doing the Axel dance. I tell my mom pretty much what I do at the end of the day. And I said, we got this new coding thing and it's not like all the other ones that we've done because the other ones are a little boring. They're also learning that if one piece of code line doesn't work, then their whole entire program's not going to work. So they are learning that they need to be precise, but it's okay to fail at the same time. The students that I encountered that didn't even know that they could code or that they would enjoy coding, but because of the intuitive nature and the really great 
explanatory process that Robotify uses, they were able to be so successful. I decided I wanted to be an engineer when I was 10 years old. Forensic scientist. I'd be a police officer or a scientist, one of the two. By now focusing on STEM education, we're hitting a niche that was not previously addressed. My goal is for them to take something away and move forward with it and continue to build on that passion. Oh yeah, I think that that video does a great job of, of highlighting just how, you know, how unique our product is. And, and what I mean by that is, you know, as a teacher, um, you know, we, we talk about all the time as students, the value that we deliver, you know, in terms of learning how to code in this really fun way. And, and we know that we know kids are going to have a great time, you know, using Robotify. But I suppose one of the big benefits of our platform is, you know, you're a teacher and you're trying to you're trying to juggle, you know, what classes you're going to do, what sessions you're going to roll out in the classroom. And the last thing you need is this big headache and how am I going to do this? But Robotify really has you know, delivered a, a fantastic and seamless experience for the educator so that when you do decide to use Robotify, that rollout of Robotify in the classroom is so super easy, so so user friendly. Uh, and we've got all of the resources in place to help to help teachers, especially the ones that, that have zero experience in coding. Uh, all of that resource is there to hold your hand and to guide you uh, so that you're not alone in your Robotify journey. And, and that really is like I can't emphasize enough um, uh, I can't emphasize enough how you know how much of a positive impact that has had on on all of our educators around the world. So I guess that kind of concludes um, our our kind of presentation on Robotify. I, I know I did mention that we are going to take a little bit more of a deep dive into the platform. So today, for you that have have showed up, we can go really deep into Robotify, show you live, you know what these features entail, just to kind of give you a visual as to as to what I've been talking about the past fifteen minutes. And so. Um, you know, I'm going to hand you over to Matt, our product specialist, uh, to walk you through the platform a little bit. So uh, thank you very much for listening to me, but I'm, I'm going to pass you over to Matt now. Thank you, Dylan. Thanks for the introduction, thank Dylan and Eva. Um, I'm Matt, I'm the product specialist at Robotify, and I'm going to go ahead and give everyone a live uh, product demo of the platform. So the first thing you want to do is um, go into the login page. Um, up the top right here, click sign in. This is robotify.com. Um, and we have a username and password field here. So um, like Hebo was saying, everyone who is attending this webinar will get their own logins, their own usernames and passwords. Um, but for now, we'll just use mine. So uh, input your username and your password here and click sign in. So the first thing you're going to see when you sign in is the home dashboard. Now, this is our one stop shop for pretty much all the playable content on the website and um, you'll see we have our courses here, our projects here and our competitions here, all stuff that Dylan mentioned earlier, but I'll go more into detail in a bit. Um, so this is a teacher account and the first thing you're going to want to do as a teacher is um, create a classroom and create your student uh, students accounts and add them to the classroom. This is so we can uh, track students progress. Um, so. I'm going to head over here on the left menu. This contains a bunch of useful shortcuts um, and click the drop down on educator home and we want to create a classroom. So we'll access my classrooms and um, this is the educator home as an educator. This is exclusive to you. Uh, students won't see this, but this contains a bunch of useful tools like student analytics and educator resources, which I will get into um, later on in the demo. But for now, like I said, we've got to create a classroom. So we click the drop down on district here. And you'll see um, your school with the, uh, the school name here. We click the drop down here as well. And we can see we've already got a couple of classrooms um, created. Um, so we'll just click this button here, add classroom and enter a classroom name, um, something descriptive so that you can identify that it is your class. So let's do um, Mr. I'll name it after myself, Mr. Dalton, fourth grade. And we'll just select whatever grade um, our classroom is. Then all we have to do is hit create classroom and we can see that it's been created successfully. Uh, so now that we've created the classroom, we've got to go in and we've got to add our students to the classroom and create their accounts. So I click manage classroom to access the classroom. So we're in the classroom here, Mr. Dalton, fourth grade. Now there's three different ways you can um, 
sign students up to Robotify and add them to the classroom, I'll really quickly uh, bring everyone through um, how to do that now. So the first way um, is to add students using a class code. So we come over here and click copy code. There's a random five digit number generated. We just hit copy code, that copies to our clipboard. And um, I'll come over here to a student account. Um, this is what the student will see when they access Robotify. Um, so we come up here to the top right, this chart here, and we have a field we can paste that code in or simply type it in. We submit. Um, uh, the student's been successfully added to our class. Uh, now this is assuming the student already has an account that they can access and join the class that way. If they don't, um, we can add students a second way, just to add a student manually. So we'll click start adding, manually add, and we can manually input their first name and last name. It's entirely optional whether you want to do that, but we've got to give them a, a username and a password. Um, and we can click uh, create accounts and enroll here. And we can do this one by one as well. We can add multiple at the same time, uh, but this isn't uh, too handy if you're looking to add students in bulk, like a whole classroom. You can imagine it would be fairly, um, you know, arduous to do that. So um, the last way and the way I normally find most handy is to auto generate the students. So we we'll click start adding and let's say we've got 15 students in a classroom. We enter a number and a username prefix like um, something descriptive again, so you can identify the student account. So let's do Dalton fourth grade and we click on generate accounts. So we can see that we have all these unique usernames generated and all these uh, randomly generated passwords and we can click create accounts and enroll uh, and distribute out these credentials to the students so they can get logged in and that will automatically add them to our classroom. So now that we've got the classroom created, we can finally go and explore some of the playable content we have on the platform. Um, so we'll come over here to the left menu. Again, there's a bunch of useful shortcuts you can use here, but we we'll click on courses. So like Dylan was talking about, we've got this three part foundational framework um, in Robotify, which is learn, uh, create and compete. And our courses comprise the learn section of our three part foundational framework. So basically the idea is this is the first place you'll kind of go to learn the basic coding concepts and become familiar with coding in Robotify. Now you can see all of our courses here. We've got a wide selection of them um, and we offer courses in two different languages, Blockly and um, just recently enough, we've released a, a new Python course. Um, so Blockly, um, if you've ever seen Scratch before, for example, uses Blockly. Um, it's a great uh, starter coding language. There's no text. Uh, it's purely block based and it's great for learning basic concepts and getting familiar with the foundations of coding. Then we've got Python, which is a text based language. Again, it's a good starter one and it gives a good foundation to go off and learn other text based languages like C++ and JavaScript. Um, it is a little bit more advanced than Blockly. Um, so for each course, obviously each course varies in difficulty. Um, so we've got a recommended grade level down here. Um, again, these are all rough guidelines. So for example, introduction to Python is grades six to eight. You could definitely teach this course to a class uh, full of students, which are fourth grade and fifth grade. They just might find it a little bit more difficult than some within this grade range. So again, they're all rough guidelines. Uh, how you implement them is completely your choice. Um, you know, you're not going to be locked out if you're in fourth grade of introduction to Python and we can filter based on grades. So this is a handy way to kind of get a feel for which courses are right for you. So we come up to here to choose grade and we click fourth grade, for example, because we're teaching a fourth grade class and we can see it's filtered down the courses here. Uh, so we're going to access Axel's Myers Adventure over here, which we were showing you a bit of earlier. It's a great starter course. It's always the one I recommend to uh, new educators that are starting on the platform. Um, and we can see we've got a description for each course here, which outlines exactly what's covered in the course. Let's click on details and get more of an insight as to what's in this lesson. So we can see we're on the lesson details page. We've got some nice pictures. There's a bit more detail given about the lesson. You've got a time estimation here to mount the lessons. Again, the description and some learning outcomes for the course as a whole. Now, each course we have is broken down into a series of different lessons and each lesson uh, will cover a slightly different uh, coding concept than the last. So just to show you here, the very first lesson in Axel's uh, Mars Adventure, there's 12 of them, um, is getting started. And we can see a description for each lesson if we click on the drop down on each one here. Um, so 
The description for the first one reads, students will familiarize themselves with Robotify and create their first program. So the first lesson is very much uh, about students getting on board to Robotify and just getting them familiar. It's, uh, there's nothing too advanced here. It's all very basic to get them comfortable. So we'll access this by clicking play now. I have it um, open in a different tab here uh, just for convenience sake. So this is what the inside of a task in Robotify actually looks like. This is what educators will see. This is what students will see when they're coding. And uh, I'll bring it through a bit by bit. So the first thing you're going to see and the first thing your eyes will probably uh, be drawn to is one of our unique 3D environments over here in the robot feed. And um, so this is Axos Mars Adventure. This takes place on uh, the Mars base. And uh, you can just see it's very colorful. There's a lot of moving parts. Uh, it's quite high definition. Um, and uh, really increases engagement with kids. They've got something nice to look at while they're coding. So we'll actually um, go through a task um, as you would, you know, when you're actually using the platform. So the first thing I always recommend doing is coming down to the bottom left here, and we've got our instructions bar, which gives these kind of self-guided tips that allow students to move through the task at their own pace. Um, so we click that to bring it up and then um, we'll read the description. So the instructions generally they will outline the objective of a task. So if you're unsure of what to do when you jump into a task, the instructions are a great thing to come to and go through. And they'll also explain any new bits of code that um, the student hasn't seen yet. So it's time to get to work. The truck bots are dropping off batteries for the habitats. So in this task, we have to collect the batteries and we can see there's one two meters ahead of Axel there in two grid spaces. Um, and it's introducing this new block in the screen, the repeat block. And um, so we're learning about loops in this lesson, which is like a fundamental uh, coding concept. Um, and we can see over here uh, in Blockly, we've got a bunch of different drawers for a bunch of different types of blocks uh, that do different things, different fundamental things. We've got sensing, we've got loops, we've got math blocks, and uh, a lot of them are great out here. But as you progress through the course and get more advanced, um, they will open up and give students more um, options. So we have to get the battery two meters in front of Axel. So we've got to get Axel to move forward twice. We've already got a loop block set up here. So all we have to do is click in the movement drawer, click and drag this move forward by one meter block and press play and see what happens. So Axel moves forward. And we've completed the task. And there you go. Axel does his little dance all the kids love so much. So um, that's the task completed. We can move on to the next one. And we'll just do that again and again. Um, we've got a level progress bar up here. So you can see now we're on the second task of um, this lesson. And um, we can see you know, how many tasks are in the lesson. Um, just a couple of things to note. Uh, it's handy to know, you know, if you mess up really badly and uh, you run some code and Axel ends up in the wrong grid space, we can reset his position here. And if we mess up really, really badly and we want to completely start again, uh, we can reset the workspace by doing this and everything resets. Um, so we'll come back to the um, home dashboard here. And the next thing I'm going to show you, which is kind of supplemental to the courses, is our um, brand new assignments feature. So this assignments feature provides a way to uh, assign kids um, homework and we can track their progress on that homework. Um, it's very handy. So I'll show you guys how to make an assignment. Uh, you can see we've already got a couple of active ones here. Um, so we create a classroom assignment. Let's just select the one that we made, our, our own classroom, Mr. Dalton, fourth grade. Select a due date um, and we'll assign them the first three tasks of that lesson I just showed you. I'm going to uh, scroll down to the bottom. All we have to do is select the tasks, create the assignment, and the assignment is successfully created. And the students will see this in their home dashboard, like I'll show you now. I'm just going to reload, and we can see the student has all their assignments um, ready to access up here. All they have to do is get into it, click play now, um, and you will be able to see the assignment details, um, the student's progress in that particular assignment, and uh, you'll be able to see if they completed it. Just takes a couple of seconds to load. OK, yeah, this is the view inside the assignments details page, and you can see the student's progress, and you can edit your assignment from here. So that comprises all the learn stuff um, of Robotify. Now, the next part that Dylan mentioned was create. So uh, this is what our projects aim to achieve. So um, our projects uh, basically contain a bunch of our unique 3D environments 
but each one presents a different coding challenge that the student has to solve. So with the projects, um, a student will take what they've learned in courses um, and apply it in a much more independent coding experience where they don't get as much direction as they would in the courses. It's not as guided, so they have the freedom to think by themselves and build their own solution. Um, so just to create a project really quickly, come up here, uh, click Create Project. Uh, we type in a name, a description. We've got projects in two different languages. Uh, we've got a wide selection of product, uh, projects again. And uh, as you can see, each environment here kind of presents a different challenge for students to solve. Um, so all we have to do is click one and click Add Project. And I have a project open here. It's a maze one. And I'll show you just what it looks like. Um, in its finished state. So this is kind of what a finished pro uh, project is going to look like. You know, students aren't expected to get to this point without, you know, a lot of time. And this is a fairly advanced one. This is what our Python workspace actually looks like. So this is all brand new. Um, and we can see we've got uh, Byte, which is Axel's little friend here. Uh, and one of our unique 3D environments, again, a different one, which takes place on uh, a spaceship. And here's our challenge here that we have to solve. We've got to get Byte to the end of the maze. And, um, you know, the idea with the projects is that students can uh, save their projects, come back and work in it. And this whole bit of code that you see here uh, ideally will be built by students um, over some amount of time. Um, and you can see that there's there's a bunch of different ways students can code to solve this um, and each one is unique. So that's our project system. Um, and uh, we've got learn, create. And now the last part we have to uh, cover is compete. So um, We've got competitions here. So basically students, again, scaffolded approach. Um, we've got students will take what they learn in the courses, the basics, then apply that in projects and they'll bring that knowledge and the code that they've built in the projects over to a competition where they can compete against their friends and uh, you know participate in a much more engaging competitive environment just to put the cherry on top of that coding experience so we've recently added the ability to create our own competitions you can create a school-wide competition so everyone in the school can compete and try to get the best score and um, so all you have to do is come over here again uh, to the shortcuts click create competition and uh, let's create a competition so let's do example Pump. Um, we we'll click a start and end date. Let's do it till tomorrow. Click our skill, and um, you can see that these are uh, all the same as the project environments. So you can see that the idea here is, you know, students will code in the project, build specific code for that project, and bring it straight across to the competitions. So they're not starting with absolutely nothing. So we'll just create the competition here. And we can see the competitions being created successfully, and students can access this competition by coming over here onto the hotbar and um, scrolling all the way down and we can see the competition. I'm in a bunch of them, but um, we can see the competition that we just created is right here. Um, so there's a couple last things I'd like to show you. Uh, one is our educator resources. Um, so this is really the bread and butter of the teaching experience at Robotify. And um, we've got a bunch of different uh, educator resources and um, different types of ones that I'll explain really quickly but um, we've got PDFs and PowerPoints formats. So the idea of the educator resources, uh, teachers can come here and even if they have never taught a lesson, uh, you know, with Robotify or don't have any experience with Robotify um, or coding in general, they're able to come here and follow these steps to uh, deliver a lesson. So the first part here you see is lesson plans. This is an example of a lesson plan. So let's say we're teaching Axel's Mars Adventure lesson one, which is the one I was just showing you guys. We come down here, click lesson one, and uh, the lesson plans basically provide a framework, uh, a breakdown of each lesson, how it's supposed to be taught. Um, the next one is our slides. So we've got a slide deck that you can put up on the board or on any projector you have as you are going through a lesson um, with students. And, you know, like I was saying, even if you have no experience, um, you can come in here and uh, we've got speaker notes at the bottom. So I'll go through each slide, each slide sequentially, and you can follow these speaker notes and still deliver a great lesson with Robotify, even with zero experience. Um, then we've got some lesson summaries here. You know, you can have these open on your desk just so make sure you don't get lost. Uh, and then we've got some worksheets, which are, you know, take students away from the screen and um, get them to do a worksheet just to reinforce what they're trying to learn um, code wise and then we've got some certificates and um, you know uh, completing a course is a big achievement so um, you can give these to kids 
uh, just to give them something to take home and be proud that they've actually completed that coding experience. Um, and, you know, we've got pro uh, educator resources for the projects as well. So each project individually, um, we've built this framework that each one can be taught uh, as if it was a lesson. Um, so that's our educator resources. Now, the next thing I want to show you really quickly uh, in the interest of time is student analytics. So we'll come over here, click student analytics and um, click uh, whatever classroom we want. So I'll just select a random one here um, and we can see our students progress through each lesson um, on the platform, um, each course. So we've got a course overview here of each student's progress. Uh, not only that, but we can go down to the lesson level and see how they're doing in each lesson. And if we click again, let's click into lesson one of Axel's Mars Adventure and see how our students in this class are getting on. We can see it on a task by task basis. So we can go even further in detail here and click um, on the task itself to see the student's solution to the task and um, how many attempts it took to get there. And uh, it compares it to you know, the recommended solution. So this is a great way to see a student's progress without having to look over their shoulder at the laptop or rely on them putting their hand up. You know, Some students are just a bit shy and they might not want to engage. Um, and the very last thing I want to show you is this really useful resource. It's our help center. So if you ever have any trouble, you don't remember some things, you know, I've gone through that fairly quickly. You don't remember some things that are presented here today. And um, you can come here. I have to use click on help center and it uh, contains a bunch of useful articles, basically going through in detail um, how to do stuff on a platform. So you can see if you forget to add a class, you can click here and it gives you screenshots and useful um, step by step descriptions of what to do. So I think that pretty much concludes the um, product demo section of the webinar. Um, yeah, thank you. Thank you, Matthew, for this introduction about Robotify. And thank you, Dylan, also for showing us how Robotify really impact students in, in classrooms. So I will be uh, just checking the, the chat box. If you, I will share my screen. Just a second. Yes, I will check the, the chat box if there is any questions. Uh, we are receiving a lot of questions. So one of the question is, um, can I can I use this platform in mobile phone and tap? Uh, this the experience will be optimized on a on a tablet. Um, in theory, yes, you could use it on a mobile, but but it wouldn't be as optimal uh, as say a tablet or a laptop. OK. Um, what is the minimum age group for using this platform? Yeah, it's a it's a it's a bit of an interesting question. That's a very good question too. Um, you know, we all know that, that coding is such a like niche um, product or niche skill, I would say. So uh, I know Matt kind of loosely gave it an answer in terms of grade levels to courses and stuff like that. But but ultimately, it would depend on um the level of the student uh, i know it's it's easy for me to just give a random age but but you know if a student is to go and try learn uh you know by by themselves with the self-guided toolbar you know the student's got to be able to read right so um depending on reading level of the student depending on previous coding level you know realistically it, it probably could be taught in you know grades one or two if they can read and at a very basic level maybe the first couple of tasks of axel uh, we do recommend a you know grade three um so prob probably what's that an age maybe maybe eight seven seven eight but but look it, it just depends on the individual student really in the classroom and that's why we kind of leave that to the discretion of the teacher okay uh, just to continue about these questions they the, the one of the teachers asking um our our early age early age students don't use word block coding is there any icon of block coding like scratch junior sorry i don't i don't understand the, the question what what was that again Heba? um they were saying is there any icon block coding easier uh, like scratch junior you are using Scratch for coding with Robotify, right? Is the block coding? It's look like Scratch. They're saying, is there like an easier option of um, this block coding? So what Matt would have shown in the Blockly experience is is probably one of the the, the kind of I'm going to say easier tasks on Robotify. Um, 
So if you go, if you were to go into say the very first task of Axel, um, it's like, can you move Axel one one meter forward? Uh, so it's very very intuitive, very very simple, and then each task will will build, you know, I suppose on on the previous one, if that makes sense. So Axel is kind of our uh, scratch junior, if you will, um, and you know, I suppose the. the the safety plaster might come off after a couple of tasks. Uh, they might become a little bit more challenging, but but very, very basic at the beginning. Yeah, so it, it should be very super easy to use in the classroom. Yeah, thank you, Dylan, for answering these questions. Also, uh, there's another question. To use Python, uh, do we need any prior knowledge of Python as no. a teacher? Yeah, yeah I'll, I'll take this one. There's uh, no prior knowledge needed as a teacher or a student with Python. Uh, the idea of the course is to give an introduction, so it really takes you from like the foundation from the beginning. Um, and with the educator resources, of course, we've got loads of notes in there for even a teacher who hasn't seen it before. Um, we've got you know a detailed description uh, from the very start. So no, you wouldn't need any prior knowledge. OK, thank you, uh, Matthew. Also, there is um, a few questions like how many coding activity are available for students in Robotify? Uh, we've got over 900 tasks um, and constantly growing, so um, I hope that answers the question. Yes. Um, also, there's a, a few questions also. Can students see their progress in coding? I think Matthew did show this. Um, yes, of course, they as a teacher um, can see, but uh, the question is also students can see the progress in coding? Yeah, so I, I think Matt actually highlighted it as well on, mm -hmm. on the demo, so up the top with the progress bar. So for each kind of lesson that students are doing, they can see how far in the task they've come yes. and also how, how far they've got to go. So we've got some good feedback on that in terms of, you know, motivation levels. So for example, if a student is having a bit of difficulty on a specific task and they feel like giving up, they might see that, you know, they've only got three tasks left in the particular lesson. So they, they might stick at it for a little bit more and, and try harder just so they can finish the lesson. So uh, a really kind of useful tool for, for students to know that they've only got a couple of tasks left. Um, so yeah, yes is the answer. Thank you, Dylan, for answering these questions. Also, we have um, um, another questions from robotics teacher. Can I do the code in Blockly, then convert it into Python? Um, not not directly, no. But but the idea is, you know, especially for students with zero experience, is that you learn the fundamentals of coding using Blockly, uh, so you kind of have an idea of what's going on. Now, I know our Python course. Um, is an introduction to Python, so in theory you don't need any previous knowledge. Um, but I suppose if you've done some Blockly courses in the past, th the fundamentals are the same. Um, so there's no, to answer the question, there's no direct translation, there's no button that you click that turns your, you know, block code into Python code, but you can certainly transfer the skill set that you learn uh, in our Blockly course uh, and then apply that into, I suppose, our, our, our Python course in the text-based coding. Thank you, Dylan. Also, there is one feedback from teacher Christy. She said the great webinar, fantastic product. Thank you, Christy. Um, one one question is from ICT teachers. Can I run a competition in my school using this platform? Yep. Okay. Yep. The teachers, the teacher uh, has the ability to run a competition in the classroom. Now, just in terms of that, if it's something that you want to do, we would recommend that, you know, give students the the time and freedom, I suppose, to be able to engage with some learn. So some of the courses that Matt would have shown uh, and then each of our competitions has, say, a, a project related to it. So to actually engage in the project with the students now in the educator resources, there's recommendations for contact time, right? So you can you can deliver, say, the project over eight weeks if it's one hour a week. So if you think of it like contact time rather than weeks, but that eight hours can be condensed right down to four. So if you are to run a competition and you want the best experience for your students in the classroom, uh, I would recommend that you engage with a couple of learn courses and then, you know, maybe create the competition, but but certainly don't have it started straight away. Get the kids to do some 
uh, some of the project work that goes behind it. And all of that information is is in detail uh, in the educator resources for the project section of the platform. Just if you want that optimal experience for the students so they're not hopping into an environment and are thinking, what's going on? I, I don't know what to do. So you, you really want your kids to be you know, engaging with the platform so they're having a good experience. So just to make sure that you give them the time and the freedom to be able to engage with, you know, learn and create before they compete. But yes is the answer. In theory, you could start one tomorrow if you wanted to. Thank you. Thank you, Dylan, for answering this question. So we have um, a couple of two questions, but before we uh, continue reading your questions, our audience, uh, please um, scan this QR code like uh, upon completing the, the form um, that you will be also there will be a link in the chat box. You can click it, click the link from the chat box to fill your information or you can scan the QR code in front of you in the in the in the slide and attendees from the live webinar will receive a robotify login credential and a certificate of attendance. Like um, Dylan, if you may, there's another one questions. Um, one question, which is, um, can I skip the task in a specific lesson? As a student, no. But if, student, if, yeah. if if you're stuck on a specific one, uh, you know, the, the teacher has the power to unlock, uh, you know, student progress. But we don't recommend it. The courses are designed, like if you're stuck on, say, lesson five, the chances of you being able to do lesson eight are, are quite low. Um, so what we'd encourage is for the educator to step in and maybe deliver some some of the content that's available in the educator resources to help the student understand, you know, what the correct answer is, but more importantly, why their answer is wrong so they can bridge that gap and, you know, understand what's going on. But but yes is the answer. Teacher does have the power to to skip a lesson for, for students, but we just don't recommend it. Thank you, Dylan, for answering these questions. There is one more question. I'm. I think I can. One more question. I think I can answer this. Uh, one of the questions said that um, um, is there any hardware come with this platform? Uh, the answer is no. From the beginning, we said that Robotify. The meaning of Robotify is uh, students will be having the ability to actually ro uh, code a virtual robotics. Um, is there anything you want to add, Dylan, for the for this question? Uh, no, I think you've pretty much you've pretty much covered that. Um, we do have a whole fleet of virtual robots, as as you mentioned, for students to engage with. So, um, the idea behind the whole virtual experience is to be able to deliver that one to one access, right? So, as a school, you're not trying to purchase, you know, four hundred physical robots at four hundred dollars a pop. You know, it's you you can you would have the ability to purchase, say, four hundred licenses at a much more affordable price. Uh, and by the way, you're not just getting one robot, you're getting a whole fleet of them, um, you know, often the power of your browser that you can use in the classroom, uh, but then also that you can take home and use at home. So you can see the experience is, is fantastic. So that's that's the idea behind the, the virtual world, I suppose. Yes, thank you, Dylan. So uh, I think we came to um, the end of our webinar. I want to thank you, Matthew and Dylan. It was very informative. I want also to thank our audience. I hope like you join uh, this webinar, this informative um, uh, webinar and you like Robotify like we do. Um, also, um, um, I want uh, just uh, before uh, before you st before I end my webinar, here's, here is our contact information. Please don't hesitate to contact us if you needed uh, if any support needed, and um, I will keep the the code in front of you in case you did not you you miss scan the code and also we will be resharing the link in the chat box to give you the chance to fill the form for you to receive the credential for robotify and a certificate for attendance and um thank you dylan again thank you matthew um uh, thank you for joining us today i want to thank our audience also uh, for joining us uh, today. Um, this is the end of our webinar. Thank you all and I wish you a very nice day. Thanks guys. Thanks very much. Yeah.